All right, and it says I am live. Apologies for the dimness. I am going to be trying out a new camera here that I just got this week. All right, everybody, like I said in the community post a few days ago, wanted to talk to you briefly about Washington Irving this weekend because I've been looking at these books that I've got on my shelf, and I've even got an old nook that I don't use a whole lot. I'm not really big into uh, ebooks or e-readers or anything like that. Why does this thing got me on the ground? Hang on. Let me get my chair up. Can you tell my kids have been in my office? But I got these two books here on my shelf, uh, a biography of Washington Irving that I haven't yet read, haven't yet read, and I'll explain why. But I've also got this nice, you know, not quite leather bound, but good hardcover edition that is an omnibus of his complete tales. The reason why the e-reader is relevant is over on Gutenberg.org, I found a collected edition of all of his essays and his nonfiction, whereas this one is his complete tales. So uh, this is all of his fiction starting in the order of publication. Uh, I don't know the exact order or the exact time when this copy was published. I got it off of Thrift Books last year, but the foreword says that it was compiled in 1895. Uh, the very first story included is Rip Van Winkle, so Irving would have published that first, and then it goes into The Spectre Bridegroom and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which is, without a doubt, his most famous work. But it continues on. Some of these stories are only three pages, five pages, uh, but it goes all the way up to page 782 of, of stories, you know, of short tales that the man wrote, and somebody kept track of them. And uh, I'm glad that they've managed to last into the 21st century. The reason that it's relevant, as I said in the description here of the video, is that historically, um, you know, after the formation of the United States, he became the first really popular international, like full-time American novelist. Another man who did so near the same time was James Fenimore Cooper, who wrote the Leatherstocking Tales, of which the most popular and well-known would be The Last of the Mohicans. So Granted, these men didn't have a whole ton of competition in their time, and they did have a hungry public that wanted entertain entertainment and wanted homegrown content. You know, they had the classics from the old country that were going to live into the next several centuries and, and continue to endure, but they wanted their own tales to share. And uh, in terms of classical American literature, this is a quest that we're, we're still on. We would love to have literature from the entire breadth of the American continent and all the many cultures that make it up. Um, Irving obviously did so on behalf of the Dutch who were Americans and uh, Fenimore Cooper. He dealt a lot with uh, the native tribes, the, um, you know, the, the Mohawks and, and others. So there's a lot to dig in there, but of the few pieces of his that I have read, I have found his, his fiction to be highly entertaining and uh, stimulating for the imagination, and I found his nonfiction to be very insightful. Just pulling up a page of quotes here, there's one that, I mean, like I said, the battery's dead on this thing just because I don't use it that much, but there's still a quote that I remember from one of the essays in there that just talks about you know, the, the duties of the citizens of a republic. And he was saying this right after the, the nation was born. You know, he was kind of echoing sentiments that Benjamin Franklin had put forth about the responsibilities of those in a republic. If you want a limited government, you have to be a lot better about governing yourself and governing your interactions with others. Um, you know, other little bits he says are things that you might see on a wall quote, but that ring true across the centuries. You know, age is a matter of feeling and not years. They who drink beer will think beer. Brother, I, if you were to replace beer in that quote with social media, the stuff that you bombard yourself with on TikTok and Twitter and all that, like that ends up becoming the dominant course of thought in your mind. And, and that's kind of true of whatever it is that you feed yourself. You know, it's why I've got a big old library back there that I would rather fill my head with, you know, things that are substantial and meaningful and good for me and good for those around me versus, you know, short, vapid content that's designed to blast your attention span into oblivion. Um, you know, great minds have purposes, others have wishes. These are the kind of concise things that if you chew on them and digest them just a little bit, it kind of makes you reevaluate yourself and say, you know, what's what's the better thing that I can do with the time that's allotted to me? And on that note, I've decided that this year I'm going to dig in a little bit more into Washington Irving. Uh, there's a reason why I avoided reading his biography at first, uh, because I am also a novelist. 
I discovered this when I wrote a novel, a novella, a short story that was kind of like I, I jokingly wanted to write a Thanksgiving epic fantasy. And that's what got me into studying the Mayflower and the Pilgrims and the, uh, the Massasoits and all that just as research for this story. And then as Louis L'Amour says, you know, you don't have to make up the details. The facts themselves are astounding. Um, the more that I learned of the nonfiction, the more I struggled to write a fictional version of these events because, yeah, L'Amour was right. The story itself was already incredible. And the more you dig into it, the more you learn that. And so I struggled to write that false account. Um, you know, Think of the movie Gladiator from 2000. That is an incredible movie. It won a ton of awards. It was an instant classic. It's lasted for the next you know, 20, 22 years, whatever. Uh, it is a massive divergence from the actual historical account. Uh, yes, Commodus did succeed Marcus Aurelius, but he ruled for 12 years. Um, I'm pretty sure Maximus was a fictional character. doesn't matter. They told a really good story. They didn't you go out there and advertise like, oh, here's a what if, whatever. It's just they were telling a good story. Um, I know for me as a writer, one of my personal hangups is if I'm writing something that's based on actual events, I struggle to then diverge from those actual events. And as I'm still writing stories that are kind of tied in with things that Irving touched on, like I've got a novel, Sleepless Hollow, that is a novel that respects the legend of Sleepy Hollow, but it is very much a Graham Bradley story. I'm glad that I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow to get the connection details correct. But I didn't want to read too much about Irving because he does have a presence in the story and I didn't want the real details to kind of screw up the story that I had come up with, if that makes any sense. But now I'm at a point where I can read his biography, I can find out you know, the, the real details of what made this writer tick 200 years ago. Again, this was a man who was born right after uh, you know, the, the nation was founded. When he was a very young boy, he met George Washington for whom he was named and that had to have an incredible impact and impression on him that kind of fueled his love for the United States and for, again, the, the mixture of North American cultures that were the, the founding of this nation. And so I, I want to know more about his life, uh, you know, the, the course of it, his inspirations and things like that. But I also want to dig into the many other short tales of his that I haven't read yet. And I was thinking something I might have fun doing is, uh, you know, since some of these are very, very short, is you know picking one night a week or every other week or something and sitting down with you, everybody here on the internet, and uh, you know reading one of these stories to you, you know giving my initial impression on it. It would be a first time for both of us. I wouldn't pick the the really long ones. And by long, I mean stuff that would take like an hour to read. You can find actually you can find a lot of full cast narration versions of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow on YouTube. In fact, I pick a random one every October to listen to when I'm going through my Halloween reading. Uh, this one here is 26 pages. The Stout Gentleman is nine pages. Whatever the Student of Salamanca is, that's almost 66 pages. You know, those are, those are longer ones that I'll just read on my own and then maybe summarize. I don't want to sit here for two hours and try to talk your ear off. But these shorter ones like, you know, The Great Unknown, The Hunting Dinner, things like that. You know, I, I want to know what these stories are about and you know what worth they might have here in the 21st century. And as I go through and you know read more and more Irving, I figured it would be cool to, to share it with you guys. So if you've got any input on that, any insights that you've had into your own reading of this man and his works, uh, feel free to share it in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Peace.